In this video, we are going to find the maximum of the product of certain positive integers given that the sum is 1976. Let us think about this problem in a more of intuitive way by trying out some smaller values. So say, if, I, if the sum of the numbers are not that large but just 10. So how are we going to split this number? Like for example, we can split into two fives. Then the product is just 5 times 5. 5 squared equals 25. Or we can further split it into 5 twos instead. And so we'll have the product to be 2 to the 5 and that's 32. So from this example, we'll have an intuition that um, the more numbers we split into, so each number becomes smaller, the product is actually larger than splitting into smaller numbers but each number um, being larger ones. Let's take a look at another example. So now the sum is, say, 30. Then how are we going to split it? If we just split it into uh, the smallest numbers, uh, of course we do not split it into um, sum of ones because the product would be very small. So say if I split into um, 15 twos, then the product is 2 to the power of 15. Now however, there's also another way for us to split, is that to split 30 into 10 threes, then the product is then 3 to the 10. Now, by computing, 2 to the 15 is actually 32,768, while the product of those 10 threes, 3 to the power of 10, is actually equal to 59,049. So clearly, splitting into threes would make larger products than splitting into twos. One final example. What if the sum is 100? So if we follow the rule by simply splitting into um, multiple threes, then I will have uh, 33 threes together with a 1. Then the product is 3 to the power of 33. This is actually very large already. But what if I take one of the threes and combine the 1 and re-split it into double twos? So that means to have 32 threes and two twos. Now the product for this combination is 2 to the 2 times 3 to the 32 and that's 4 times 3 to the 32 which is actually even larger than 3 to the 33 because this is just 3 times 3 to the power of 32. If we compare these two numbers in this way we'll see that the latter one is larger. So these small cases tells us that the rule is actually to try our best to split to get as many frees as possible, but if we somehow have four left, which means our original sum has remainder one when divided by three, then we get two twos instead of getting a three plus one. So to optimize our resulting product. Now back to our main problem. So I'm going to apply the rule that I've obtained just now to uh, kind of get an, a rough image of our final answer. So because 1976 is equal to 3 times 658 plus 2. So our answer should be very close to, not exactly, but very close to um, something like 2 times 3 to the power 658. Now, if we've managed to prove that our rule is actually correct, then this is indeed the answer, but we have to prove this first. So to prove this, I'm going to bring in the ANGM inequality, which says that for positive real numbers, say n of them, arithmetic mean, which means adding them and divided by n, must be greater than or equal to the product of these n numbers and taking the n root. Now this inequality should help a lot because the problem statement is exactly about sums and products. So from this inequality, 
we know that 1976 over n is squared or equal to a1 times a2 all the way up to a n and the whole thing to the power 1 over n. Now I'm going to bring both sides to the power n so we have the product to be less than or equal to 1976 over n and the whole thing to the power n. So we, if we can manage to find the maximum value of this expression and there is actually an equality case, then we are done. Now at this point, I'm going to use calculus by letting the function f to be equal to 1976 over x and the whole thing to power x. And then I'm going to uh, rewrite the over x into x to the power minus 1 and the whole thing to the power x. For functions of this form, which means having the variable at the index, we usually rewrite the base um, in terms of exponential uh, constant e. So this will become e to the power 1976 times x to the minus 1, whole thing to the uh, natural log, and this thing to the power x. So finally we will have e to the power x times log of 1976 minus natural log of x. So this is our function. Now I'm going to differentiate it. So I'm going to use the chain rule. So f prime of x is equal to the derivative under um, uh, on the base e. So we just have the original function. multiplying by the derivative of the index. So for the derivative of the index, we have to use the product rule. So we have um, the derivative of x multiplying by uh, this part unchanged and then adding by x times minus 1 over x. So simplifying we have the original function, which is actually never zero, multiplying by natural log 1976 minus natural log of x minus 1. So to find the maximum, we need the derivative to be zero. And as mentioned just now, our original function f is never zero. So that means the only possibility for the derivative to be zero is that the other part is equal to natural log of x plus one. So that means solving will have x equals 1976 over e. And the question is, what does this maximum actually imply? It means that uh, we have to split 1976 into 1976 over e numbers so that we can obtain the maximum for the product. Now if we split it into this number of numbers then each number would then be equal to 1976 divided by this x that means each number should take value e. Now we know that this conclusion is absurd because we are talking about uh, splitting into positive integers. But this result gives us a very useful, very helpful intuition is that we should choose the numbers that is the closest to e. Now given that e is equal to 2.71828182849045 and so on, the rest is not important, we know that we should always aim for freeze. Now this proof by calculus um, gives us a very strong evidence to um, support our rule of splitting numbers. So this will tell us that our answer that we've obtained just now, like intuitively, is true. So the answer is 
2 times 3 to the power 658. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to suggest any alternatives in the comments. If you like my videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel right now. Thank you for your support. See you next time.